Good evening, everybody. Welcome inside LaSalle College High School, the site of tonight's Philadelphia Catholic League opener between the LaSalle College High School Explorers and the Cardinal O'Hara High School Lions. Welcome inside our broadcast booth, everybody. Bob Long, Bruce Badgley alongside, makes his way by way of Berks County. It does a great job broadcasting high school sports in that area. So nice of him to lend his hand here tonight. And he's getting his first Philadelphia Catholic League action. Bruce, welcome. Thanks so much for making it out, my friend. Oh, I wouldn't miss it for the world. This is great. I mean, uh, you know, the last time I saw LaSalle College was actually two blocks from my house there at, uh, you know, Governor Mifflin when they uh, – took uh, Redding High, you know, down in the state tournament last year. So uh, there's, our, you know, some familiar faces that we've run into tonight. So really anxious to see my, you know, first Philadelphia Catholic League action, um, you know, of all time. Well, it's a great segue as well, Bruce, because this is a LaSalle College High School team coming off a spectacular season, a legendary season, and one of their best seasons in program history all the way to the state semifinal, a tough loss in that semifinal game against Penridge High School, but a team led by seniors, really Jake Timby, one of the only guys, not a senior that contributed in a big way for that team. Now, all those guys are gone, off at college, off playing at the next level. Timby is the guy now, a senior that we're looking out for, a sharp shooter, a great defender, a guy that does a little bit of everything, and now it's the young guys on this LaSalle team that are going to make the difference this year. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the best thing about December is that, uh, you know, getting these guys, you know, the action that they need uh, for, you know, right now, starting, uh, you know, conference play a little bit early, you know, but it's going to be great to see how they kind of gel, how the chemistry comes together for these guys. Um, really anxious to see how they're going to perform tonight. First time we're going to see Sam Brown back in the lineup for LaSalle. He will not get the start tonight, but we expect him pretty quickly off the bench. A star on the football team, a guy who is playing two sports here at LaSalle and took a little bit of time off after the football season, now 100% ready to go. And an athlete, a difference maker, and a very good basketball player that looks to contribute big minutes, big point totals, and a big impact this year for LaSalle. Well, I love these football players that play basketball as their you know, second sport, so to speak. But it translates well, I think, to the rest of the team in toughness. Um, you know, especially with a young team, building that toughness. Now, he's a youngster himself. I mean, he's only a sophomore. But he's going to bring toughness to this team. And that's what they're going to need, you know, early on. They're still trying to find themselves. But, uh, you know, that's something that they sorely need. On the front court for LaSalle, looking forward to seeing Mike DiPietro, the big man at six foot five. Nick Sverano coming off the bench, scored 20 points in the last game, including six trays. So they can spread the floor. The big man can shoot a little bit well as well, DiPietro. This is a balanced team, and now it's the question is, how are they going to gel here throughout December as we head into Philadelphia Catholic League play? And then for Cardinal O'Hara, a 9-13 and team last year, 3-11 and in a very difficult Catholic League. But Ryan Menetz, He's, he's turned this thing around. A couple of transfers have come in. They have some size on the front court, and they always play LaSalle tough. And this is a team that uh, dismantled uh, it was a Chestnut Hill. That That's right. That basically took you know, LaSalle right to the buzzer uh, you know, just a, a couple days ago. So going to be interesting how both of these teams stack up. I'm really looking forward to a good game tonight. It should be a great one here. Just a few minutes away from tip-off, we'll have uh, introductions in the National Anthem, but we're going to play a few messages from our sponsors here. You are watching LaSalle College High School Basketball on Bob Long Sports. Bob Long, Bruce Badgley, stay with us. We'll be right back. Nearly 40 years. Right here on Frankfurt Avenue. Generation after generation. Our neighbors continue to be our customers. We have access to the cars and trucks you want. With financing you need. Dumpy Ford is Northeast Philly's first choice for America's number one brand. 7700 Frankfurt Avenue in Mayfair. Online at www.dumpyford.com. Come experience the Dumpy difference. You'll be glad you did. <laughs> I chose CCM because I have found that this company um, on the level of scaling that we have here, the volume that we are doing, to truly have every department head and employee fully engaged in the mission of the company to make it an originator focused, uh, production first 
uh, company. I have not found that anywhere I've worked, and I've worked at one of the largest banks in the world, down to the smallest tiny community bank and correspondent lender. No one has been able to consistently deliver that message. Good evening, everybody. Welcome into the Nittany Lions Sports Report. Good evening, everybody. Welcome into the Nittany Lions Sports Report live on Bob Long Sports. Today, we're going to talk about the offensive line and our man of the hour, the chef, the man himself. Des Holmes and Mike Miranda, your disruptors on the Penn State offensive line. This year, you're going to see all four guys run. They all bring a different style. The quarterback is going to read the defensive end's eyes and make a determination. Am I going to keep this football or am I going to hand it off to the running back? And that is generally the of the RPO. Look who we have. We have Chris Perangeli, our guest picker for the evening. What does your character look like? Does it bounce back after each setback? Does it stand out by standing up? Does it make good on good intentions? Character is invisible until it's not. Only through action will the world know what it's made of, what you're made of. Find out how you can strengthen the character of your community alongside empowered veterans and families of the fallen at travismanion.org. And welcome back inside LaSalle College High School. Introductions finishing up with Jake Timby, the senior for LaSalle. Along with him, Mike DiPietro, Liam O'Donnell, Shane Holland, and Charles Ireland, the starters. For Cardinal O'Hara, coached by Ryan Nemitz. 
Number 22, Solo Bambara, a talented player at six foot six, has given LaSalle trouble over the years. Also out there, number three, Trey Dinkins. Number 10, Kevin Reeds. Reeves, a three-year starter for this Cardinal O'Hara team. Adrian Irving is out there as well as Anthony Purnell. Bob Long, Bruce Badgley alongside. Excited to get this 2019-2020 Philadelphia Catholic League season underway. Yeah. Cardinal O'Hara in navy blue, LaSalle in the home whites. Real excited to be here, Bob. You know, you mentioned a little bit uh, before we started how O'Hara's had uh, LaSalle's number here of late. They have played well against LaSalle, keeping it close against the Explorers each of the last two years. Last year in a tremendous year for LaSalle, O'Hara hung tough. And two years, three years ago, I should say, it was Jalen Peebles who set a building record with 41 points scored and leading O'Hara to a one-point win in that game. Here's Jake Timby bringing down the nice rebound off the miss from Adrian Irving. And the first look at the point guard Shane Holland for the Explorers. Holland wanted the ball on the post. Up top here, DiPietro dribbles to his left. Patience here from the Explorers as here's the point guard getting the ball in the post. Tough man to man to start. Goes right up, tough defense there and poked away by Cardinal O'Hara. Numbers here on the weak side block, tipped in there. Nice job by Trey Dinkins. Yeah, look for them to play a little bit more up-tempo to start. LaSalle's back in kind of a tight zone defense. I expect them to try and push it up the floor quickly. Charles Ireland across the timeline. Six thirty to play, first quarter. And a good cut inside. Ireland had trouble handling it, though, right back to the Lions of Cardinal O'Hara. Always the thing that I look at to start a game is, uh, you know, team spacing between the players. See the movement there. Uh, those first couple sets look pretty good. Popping open for three. Didn't take it, though. Here's a dribble drive all the way to the hole, and a foul is called Ooh. against DePietro. Solo Bambara will go to the line. He can really move with that basketball. Went right to the basket, uh, had the opening, and got the foul. And here's another look at that one. The jab strip, the jab step gave up the three. Another look there. It looks like a lot of basketball, but it will be Bambara to the line. Cardinal O'Hara with an early 3 nothing lead over the Explorers. We talked about it pregame, Bruce. A lot of talent lost off this LaSalle team. Seven seniors that played regular and starter type minutes, essentially. They had, a, they had a deep team, but they were balanced, and it was a lot of senior help. Bambara can't hit that one. Scramble for the basketball, and O'Hara gets it back. They'll be able to reset the offense. Question now is, Bruce, these seniors that have now turned away and gone to college. The sophomores and juniors for LaSalle have to step up. They have to step up and, you know, thankfully that uh, turnover didn't cost them, but, you know, they got to uh, pay attention to each pass, look it right in their hands. Ireland feeds it down low. Here's to Petro, nice skip pass there. Timby on the dribble drive. Now the big man spots up and hits the three. That's going to be tough to defend if he can knock that down all night long. A pick and pop big guy, Mike DiPietro. And it's 4-3 O'Hara. I like the full court pressure. Good feed inside, and O'Hara breaks the pressure well. Kevin Reeves puts it in. You and know, that, that sometimes that, that full court pressure there can get the intensity of your team up quickly. I think that's what Coach is trying to do there. And Reeves, a guy at six foot two, yes, but a stocky guy, you'll see him down low and executing in that perspective as well as out at the three-point line. Real tight man-to-man -man defense in there. Well, Sal will reset under five to play here in the first quarter. Ireland tees it up. That one's no good. Bambara brings it down. Boy, that Bambara, he just ruling the paint so far. A high ball screen from Bambara. Purnell will pull it back. Hesitation dribble, a floater is good, mm. and a big time move by Adrian Irving Jr. Nice play there. Gonna need some help on him tonight if he does those kind of moves. Defense, 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 defense. 
And cutting to the baseline, Timby couldn't oh. get it over the front rim. That's Saw pressure coming behind him. Good up the floor pass, Kevin Reeves. Fast pace so far, not really what I expected, and a timeout. Timeout called by Mike McKee, 3.59 to play. We're halfway home here in the first quarter. It's Cardinal O'Hara 10, LaSalle 3. I expected the zone, the, what the coach was trying to do with the zone defense is somewhat, you know, uh, temper uh, that offensive set by uh, O'Hara, but it actually looks like it ignited them, especially when they went to that full court press. They broke it pretty easily, got some easy baskets. But, you know, on the offensive side for LaSalle, I really like their spacing. Um, they're pulling that uh, tough man-to-man -man defense out away from the basket. You know, some good back cuts in there. So, uh, you know, that should pay, should pay some dividends in the long run. This is the Philadelphia Catholic League opener here from LaSalle College High School. LaSalle against Cardinal O'Hara. Two teams with fast starts to the year. Cardinal O'Hara unbeaten thus far, 4-0 and on the year. And as you mentioned pregame, Bruce, it was a... Big win against Springside Chestnut Hill that turned some heads for this Cardinal O'Hara team. Yeah, uh, turned my head, that's for sure. A couple of transfers in the last few years. Adrian Irving came from Wilmington two years ago. Jack's tricky at six foot eight. Haven't seen him yet, but a guy that is a transfer from Sanford in Delaware and looks to add some front court presence off the bench for this Lions team. You know, one of the things that I always look at, you know, with a team like LaSalle this year is, you know, the substitution pattern that the coach is going to get into, you know, during the course of a game and during the course of a season. Um, that's where uh, I think that the coach is going to have to learn about this team. Here's Nick Verano looking for help with the basketball and throws it away. Picked up his dribble a little early and... It was DePietro cutting away from that pass. Yeah, not, you know, he did have a good look, but, uh, you know, you got to get that ball into the hands of the player down in the post. O'Hara, another quick start here against the Explorers. Oh. Spinning inside, thought there might have been steps, but it's an <laughs> offensive foul. Standing in was Shane Holland. Wow, I mean, still a pretty move, uh, you know. That zone defense, he's just going right through that. Watch him, the, the quick spin up and, oh boy, that uh, right under the basket there. In the NBA, I don't know if they would have been able to call that. but <laughs> No restricted area here in the high school level. Certainly referees discretion on that one. And now a good catch there by Holland. Holland gives it right back. Verano got his defender in the air, a little short. And Bambara, good hands to bring that one down. Yeah, that man, tough man-to-man -to -man defense definitely giving them some problem. I think they need to, you know, a couple more passes in there to settle down on the offensive end. And, boy, that was a sweet three there by uh, uh, Kevin Reeves. He hit two in the lane. That's a three from distance to get him underway. He's feeling it early on here from Winmark. Timby lost the ball. And up oh. the floor, losing his footing was Adrian Irving. Would have been an easy deuce. Uh, everybody's getting a little bit excited early on. Holland is blocked. <laughs> That's Trey wow. Dinkins knocking it away. 2.34 to play here in the first quarter. And O'Hara maintains that 10-3 lead. Make that 13-3 after the Reeves three. One more look at this one. Ooh, yeah, there were two guys. I think either one of those guys uh, should have got it. Even Bombara, I think, was in a position to block it. Sam Brown just checked into the game. We mentioned we'd see him dressed for the first time here tonight. And Verano needs some help. Nobody's cutting to the ball. They do get it in and a good one-handed catch. Timby is open for three in the corner. That one's well long. Brought down by Reeves. And they just, you know, they're getting some good looks. It just seems like they're a little bit out of sync offensively. Bambara oh, nice. is blocked. <laughs> and here comes LaSalle the other way. Spinelli gives it up for Brown, an easy two. That's, uh, you know, what you got to do. Get some people out on the break after the rebound. Uh, that's a great way to break, up, break down that defensive pressure. And the made two allows LaSalle to slow down O'Hara a little bit. Full court pressure. 1.49 to play first quarter. 
LaSalle in this matchup zone. Now off the high ball screen, a step back Trey. That's oh. a tough one, but knocked down by Trey Dinkins. I was about to say they need to send a couple guys through the lane, but not when you can put those down. That's a big time Trey. And it's an 11 point lead for this undefeated Cardinal O'Hara team. Brown for the answer on the other side. Big time oh. finish, oh, oh, oh. Matt Spinelli. Wow. Great. I mean, he had the opening, went after the ball. You really like to see that. Spinelli's a senior. He's the one that's got to lead this team. And Timby got a hand on that one. The zone is active here for LaSalle. Into the middle, Reeves Gee, is good. That's what I talk about. That cutter to the lane seemed like if they put that, you know, to him there, that that's going to be open on that defense. The one big collapse, number 25, Nix Verano, who was playing in the center, down to the block and allowed that opening in the midst of the zone. Verano got his defender in the air, collides to the hoop and is fouled. Nice, nice move there by uh, Verano. But that's what a senior's got to do on a team like this, Bob. I mean, they've got to, you know, these younger players are going to look to those seniors uh, to carry him through these, you know, these tough times in the early part of the season. The seniors are the ones that are going to develop the chemistry on the team. And free throws, certainly important here in a game where you've built an early deficit. Chance to score with the clock stopped. 32 seconds left here in the first quarter. Might be your last time to get the ball offensively in this eight-minute period. And Verano hits both. We mentioned this kid, a sophomore, he'll take a seat now. Played freshman ball exclusively last year, but had a propensity to hit it from deep and has come in in the early stages and been one of the key guys off the bench. 20 points in last Saturday's game against Dallas Jesuit, including six threes. 16 seconds on the clock. O'Hara leads 18 to nine. Jameel Burton. Off the ball screen, here's a three from the wing, no good. Rebound, chance for another look. Still two seconds, now one. A follow, not in time, and that's the end of the first quarter. Cardinal O'Hara 18, LaSalle 9, and the Lions have come in striking, both inside and from deep. And LaSalle goes to the bench, thinking about getting these back here in the second quarter. Well, you know, toward the, the, the latter part of the quarter, they really started, I think, uh, move the ball better offensively uh, against that tough man-to-man. -man. Um, that was a good timeout, actually, by uh, Coach McKee there, I thought, halfway through. I think it settled the team down. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's going to be very interesting to see, you know, with this team and building the chemistry, you know, what kind of substitution pattern he's going to use throughout the season. Because, and especially in this game, um, it's a lot more up-tempo than what I expected it to be. Um, and I think LaSalle's going to have to use, uh, you know, quite a few bodies to keep up with O'Hara. Clearly, talent-wise, O'Hara's got some, some ballers out there. I mean, Bambara, um, uh, uh, Kevin Reeves. I mean, both of those guys had uh, very good quarters. So I'm really interested to see how, uh, you know, what kind of defensive pressure LaSalle can do. I guess the zone defense is the right defense considering the athletic it looked like you know athletically that O'Hara's you know ahead of him a bit but you know down 18 to 9 it's going to be interesting to see now on the O'Hara side whether they kind of you know uh, pull the ball back and uh, make him come out of that zone and play a little man to man that's what I'll be looking for in the second quarter yeah I'm also interested to see if we get to see Horace Simmons the seventh or eighth guy off the bench for LaSalle a guy who is a freshman but does play for the JV team, got some good run in the game that we just saw a few minutes ago, and I think is a guy that as he continues to mature can be one of those answers, athletically, defensively, offensively for this LaSalle team, and whether he's going to get any run here in the second quarter. All right, here we go. Underway here in the second. Bob Long, Bruce Badgley, Evan Eisfeld is on camera tonight doing a great job. Losing the footing there just into the game was Horace Simmons. And behind the back he goes. What a finish at the hoop. Anthony Purnell. <laughs> oh, man. 
I'll tell you what, really sweet move there, but it just kind of shows you, you know, the athleticism on that uh, O'Hara squad. There's a three for Simmons. Back iron, no. Brought down by the big man and the transfer, Jacks Tricky. O'Hara, they want to go up tempo. Good defense there by Timby. Thought there might have been a travel. O'Hara similarly asking for a foul, and no whistle. We carry on. Yeah, this is the chess match here now. It's going to be interesting to see how long O'Hara is going to let them, you know, uh, in that zone defense. I guess as long as they keep hitting those threes from out, they will. But uh, I kind of look for uh, Coach Nemitz there to kind of do something to bring them out of that zone and then get them one-on-one -on -one where I think the athleticism there of O'Hara is going to be uh, tough to handle for LaSalle. Jamil Burton picks up the personal off the ball. His first, team's third. Liam O'Donnell, the junior, checks in. DePietro wants the ball, goes one on one against Tricky. O'Donnell, an open three, in and out. And again, eyes up the floor here by Cardinal O'Hara. Leads to a quick look from the elbow, no good. But a push off underneath. DePietro picks up the personal foul. That's the team's second, comes with 6.43 to play in the second quarter. Well, they really need him uh, uh, in there. I mean, he is at least a force inside there, and it looks like he's going to sit the bench. That's going to be uh, difficult there for LaSalle. But, uh, His second he, personal, Bruce. Yeah, second personal already, and he's on the bench. That's not, not going to be a, a good look for LaSalle inside. Meanwhile, it's... Liam O'Donnell at six foot one guarding Jacks Tricky as LaSalle goes into a man to man. So they go right to Tricky, spinning over the left shoulder. And yeah. it goes down. A good roll there. Yeah, I I, I figured that uh, LaSalle was gonna have to, you know, get out of that zone. And uh, but I guess pick your poison when it comes to O'Hara tonight. They're looking awful strong early on. Patience here. Now a dribble drive all the way to the hoop. Extra pass here for Timby, and they'll reset it. Six minutes left here in the second quarter. Arousing applause to our right as Cardinal O'Hara stayed with that extra pass. Now Timby dials it nice. up for three. Yeah, I mean, uh, that cures a lot of ills, but uh, boy, I tell you what, uh, still O'Hara really tough on the defensive side there as well, making LaSalle work for every pass. And that's what you're gonna need if you're LaSalle from Jake Timby, your senior, your sharp shooter, a guy that hit you know, just about every big shot you could imagine last year. Well, I saw him hit that shot to be running high last year, so you got that right, Bob. 5.27 to play, 22 to 12. Cardinal O'Hara leads this one. Purnell plays catch across for Burton. Now inside they go for Tricky. And good hands in there, loose ball. And it is recovered by O'Hara, but given right back. Holland drives to the hole, he's fouled, and will shoot two at the line. Tricky was in pursuit, but it was number zero, Anthony Purnell, committing the foul. I love the defensive pressure by LaSalle, forces the turnover, and right to the basket. It was contact as he was going up into his shot, not the flyby from Tricky that caused the personal. Missed the first, second upcoming here. Four team fouls against Cardinal O'Hara, two for LaSalle. 5.08 to play in the second quarter. And Nick's Verano back in there. Gonna be interesting to see if he can uh, put a little spark in the team like he did in the first quarter. Now and very across interesting. the timeline. Thought about an open three there. Now a hesitation dribble drive. There's the open three from the opposite wing. Well short, loose ball into the stands. O'Hara basketball with 4.48 to play. You know, the um, substitution pattern so far for Coach uh, McKee working uh, good. Intensity up, went to the full court press, getting some turnovers. Just exactly what the doctor ordered, and here's uh, DePietro back in. A couple of coaches here, Ryan Nemitz and Mike McKee with credentials to back up the programs that they are leading, both of them with some solid college experience. 
for McKee out at the University of Denver for a long time. Had some scouting experience at the NBA level as well. And Nemitz, student assistant back in his college days under Fran Dunphy at Temple and then assistant for IMG Academy a High School down in Bradenton, Florida. A lot of people might be familiar with. And then oh. Eastern University, a giveaway here. Big time oh. throwdown, <laughs> Trey Dinkins. Trey Dinkins there. I mean, he was just waiting. He was licking his chops. I think he kind of baited that pass to go to the center and then went right down the court and slammed it. Timeout called by Mike McKee, and that's an unforced error there for the LaSalle Explorers, a tough cross-court pass. Had to get through a lot of sets of hands, including an active set of hands from Trey Dinkins. Yeah, no, look, uh, I've been, been very impressed really with both teams. Uh, LaSalle, um, you know, they've, they've kept their head up, they kept the intensity up. Um, they're scrapping hard on defense. They forced a couple of turnovers. Granted, they've got an 11-point, uh, you know, deficit at the moment. But, uh, you know, they're hanging tough in there. I really do like the man-to-man -man defense better than the zone. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see whether he, you know, continues that uh, full-court pressure, you know, down the stretch. i got to believe that he's got to try and form, force more turnovers. But that's going to be really difficult against that athleticism on the O'Hara side. Oh, sure. And this is a team in O'Hara that wants to play up-tempo. Whether you force them to play up-tempo or not, they wanted to get across half court as quickly as possible and space the floor and get somebody driving to the hoop for some penetration that could lead to a kick out for three. Now a new defensive formation here from Cardinal O'Hara as they head into a double team. And that oh. is a poke away from behind the fifth team foul. Dinkins doesn't like the call. I could barely hear the whistle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, usually you can hear those whistles pretty good. And it's just grabbing of the wrist there, trying to poke that basketball away. Yeah. Timby wide open for three. No good. Boy, it was that's a good his... back screen to get him open, though, Bruce. That's a shot. Great steal there. Verano. Ooh, dangerous pass oh. there. Unfortunate there for the Explorers, and O'Hara comes right back. Pull up for three. It's good. Nothing but net. Adrian Irving, Jr. Boy, I tell you what, you give those guys just an inch, and they're going to take advantage of it. Great guard play so far this half by O'Hara. Correction, they say foot on the line, so a long two. The three won't go. Good rebound by DePietro, and he's fouled by Tricky. You know, Wasn't a ton of contact there, but just kind of slid underneath him after he let that ball go, Bruce. And uh, DePietro's played well inside. I mean, uh, if he could, you know, I think a big key going down the stretch is whether he can stay out of foul trouble, went up strong for the basketball. And as you saw on that replay, Bruce, he just wasn't able to land. Tricky just moves the lower half of the body into him as he's Falling to the floor, that's a tough mistake there for Tricky and something that I think Nevitz will have a conversation with him about during film session. But I think Tricky came in, again, a transfer this year, a junior coming from Sanford. He's done a nice job in the front court for this Lions team. Yeah, he sure has. Nearly an offensive rebound, but here comes Irving Jr. the other way. Great oh, look inside. Oh, or should I say no look? No look. Oh, my. Really sweet there. Jamil Burton got the uh, basket, but boy, Adrian Irving really with a sweet pass. Cardinal O'Hara doubling up LaSalle here on their home floor. The LaSalle Explorers and the LaSalle Faithful here in Winmore. A little bit surprised by what's going on here so far. Timeout called by McKee. Wow, totally impressive performance by O'Hara on both ends of the floor, Bob. I mean, defensively, uh, I think that they've kept LaSalle, you know, out of their flow. But, boy, I mean, they have shown that uh, they can go on all cylinders on the offensive side. Three-pointers, fast break, great passing, down the lane. That's a complete team over there at O'Hara. Nemitz said preseason he thinks they're going to surprise people. We mentioned in the open. Well, consider a lot of folks that are watching this game right now a, a little bit surprised. I mean, this is a team that is 4-0 at this point in the year and playing really good basketball against a talented, albeit young LaSalle team. Well, you know, this is a lot of fun for me because being a Berks County guy, 
And, you know, watching all the rankings and everything, you know, a lot of fun throughout the season is always connecting the dots. And, you know, being able to connect the dots on uh, Cardinal O'Hara and how they're going to go down the stretch is going to be something that I'm going to be paying attention to all season long, I can tell you that. Very impressive team out there. Now there's question about whether it was tipped or not. And they say it was tipped, so Cardinal O'Hara basketball. Purnell, I think, got a little bit ahead of himself. I think he just flung that into the sideline. But uh, the officials saw the tip, so they'll get one more shot out of 2.46 to play. Second quarter. Good catch there by Reeves. Burton runs the point. And here's Anthony Purnell. Bambara stretches it deep. Little too short on that three. Verano drives and steps back. Foul is called against Bambara, and that is going to send LaSalle to the line. Seven team fouls against Cardinal O'Hara. Comes with 2.26 to play here in the second quarter. Interesting, uh, you know, last go round there that uh, Coach McKee put Horace Simmons, you know, outside there to kind of. Uh, stem some of that three-point shooting. Um, you know, he's a freshman, but boy, he's got some length. He's going to definitely disrupt some shots. Brown misses the front end, brought down by Bambara. That foul was given to Adrian Irving. I, I think the officials missed the second two because Irving wasn't anywhere near that play. That foul was on Bambara, but that is Irving's second, so that hurts. Cardinal O'Hara, it'll stay here after a big time effort on the offensive glass to keep that ball alive. Last touch by LaSalle. Yeah, Sam Brown really went, you know, that's, that's where that toughness is of a football player is very important on the basketball court because, uh, you know, if he doesn't go up strong for that, that's an easy lay in. Foul called against Simmons. The freshman trying to body up the six foot six solo Bambara. Oh, now they got him down inside, so it's going to be uh, interesting to see. Well, Simmons comes in six foot five, a freshman. He'll check out. Matt Spinelli, the senior at six foot four, checks in in his place. You know, you're getting some valuable minutes as a freshman. Very, very important. Two minutes to play here in the second quarter. Bob Long, Bruce Badgley alongside. Evan Eisfeld helping us out on camera here tonight. Great look inside. Bambara. And oh. that, wow, I can't believe that that's not goaltending. I, I, I mean, uh, you could literally. And now a warning called against Ryan Nemitz. But suffice to say, I can understand his frustration. I mean, that was clearly off the glass. And well, the, the, the net was vibrating after that one. Wow. So no goaltending. Instead, it's LaSalle basketball. And the head coach, Ryan Nemitz, for Cardinal O'Hara, receives a warning. All right, really going to be interesting to see what kind of offensive set LaSalle puts together here right now. They need a basket. Brown does a lot himself. Pretty good defense there on the outside. Good first step. High off the window. No good. Got his own rebound and finish. Shane Holland takes it into his own hands, and the senior cuts it to 12. Yeah, I talked earlier. You know, seniors are the ones that are going to develop the chemistry on this team, and, you know, that's exactly what uh, Shane's got to do. Purnell with a high right hand to dribble. Brought back here by Frankie Parati, and they'll reset it. Yeah, no reason to get in any rush. The beauty, or maybe the curse of high school basketball, is that you can hold this for as long as you'd like. Purnell gets a good look from the top of the oh, key. Oh, man. And the lead is 15 again. Wow, that's exactly what they needed. A good look at a three, and... Uh, and boy, Purnell just buried it. Good two-man basketball between Burton and Purnell set up that look. Timby pulls up, that's a good look. A little short, brought down by oh, Bambara. Nice. He didn't give up on it, but. Numbers for O'Hara, Purnell oh, lays it in. I tell you what, I mean, last two minutes of a quarter can be a killer. And uh, 
you know, LaSalle got close, but uh, O'Hara is just pulled away again. A 5-0 spurt in the last minute, down to 13 seconds in the quarter. Shane Holland holds it up. We're under 10. Now he'll run off the high ball screen all the way to the hoop. Can't get it over the front rim. Still time. Three seconds left. Reeves is fouled and goes into a shooting motion. He's going to get credit for it. He'll shoot two at the line. Well, you know, good hard foul, I think, there by Sam Brown. Going to make him earn it. But still, uh, boy, how quick O'Hara came flying back to open this lead back up. Reeves puts it in a four, uh, a, a, a six-point <laughs> run here. 18-point lead for Cardinal O'Hara. Point nine on the clock. Hits them both. It's 35-16. Timby with one heave at the horn. It did catch the backboard, but that's all. I mean, uh, LaSalle had the ball down 12 with just under two minutes to go. A 7 a run. And then, boom. I mean, just that quick. Um, you know, it's, it's one where you really have got to protect the ball. Um, and from, uh, you know, a coach's perspective there, boy, sometimes it's really difficult to uh, kind of stem that kind of tide that quick. We'll take a break. It's halftime here at LaSalle College High School. Thanks for joining us here in our first broadcast of the year, the Catholic League opener here at home for LaSalle. Cardinal O'Hara with a big-time output here in the first half, 35 points to LaSalle's 16. They'll head to the locker room, talk things over, and we'll be back before you know it here on Bob Long Sports. Our customers. We have access to the cars and trucks you want with financing you need. Dumpy Ford is Northeast Philly's first choice for America's number one brand. 7700 Frankfurt Avenue in Mayfair. Online at www.dumpyford.com. Come experience the Dumpy difference. You'll be glad you did. I chose CCM because I have found that this company um, on the level of scaling that we have here, the volume that we are doing, to truly have every department head and employee fully engaged in the mission of the company to make it an originator-focused, uh, production-first uh, company. I have not found that anywhere I've worked, and I've worked with one of the largest banks in the world, down to the smallest tiny community bank and correspondent lender, no one has been able to consistently deliver that message. Good evening, everybody. Welcome into the Nittany Lions Sports Report. Good evening, everybody. Welcome into the Nittany Lions Sports Report live on Bob Long Sports. Today, we're going to talk about the offensive line and our man of the hour, the chef, the man himself. Des Holmes and Mike Miranda, your disruptors on the Penn State offensive line. This year, you're going to see all four guys run. They all bring a different style. The quarterback is going to read the defensive end's eyes and make a determination. Am I going to keep this football or am I going to hand it off to the running back? And that is generally the point of the RPO. Look who we have. We have Chris Barangeli, our guest picker for the evening. What does your character look like? Does it bounce back after each setback? Does it stand out by standing up? Does it make good on good intentions? Character is invisible until it's not. Only through action will the world know what it's made of, what you're made of. Find out how you can strengthen the character of your community alongside empowered veterans and families of the fallen at travismanion.org.
Halftime here at LaSalle College High School. Bob Long, Bruce Badgley alongside. Let's get you back inside our broadcast booth. Again, I'm Bob. He's Bruce. Came in all, he's come all the way from Berks County here. So we're happy to have you, my friend, all the way from Shillington to see us here in Philadelphia. So thanks for making time on a Tuesday night. I tell you what, I, I wouldn't do anything else. This is great. I hope Bob has me back because I love uh, seeing, you know, new teams, new conferences. Um, this is my first Catholic League, you know, regular season game. And quite honestly, I'm glad that I'm one of the guys taking a look at this O'Hara team, you know, early on because I've been very impressed with their athleticism, very impressed with the defense, uh, very impressed with, you know, their offensive flow. Um, you know, they're going to be a, a, a tough out for anybody. It doesn't matter whether it's in the Catholic League or when it gets into the postseason. Clearly, in my mind, you know, this is going to be a team that, that I'm going to stay focused on the rest of the season. I mean, guard play, outstanding. Inside game there with uh, Solo Bambara, outstanding. I mean, this is going to be a lot of fun to watch these guys. It's a league in and of itself, Bruce, that it is as talented as any league in the country. I mean, if you thought the league was deep last year and LaSalle ended up outlasting every one of them in the state playoffs, including Roman Catholic, who they beat the third time through, uh, for as talented as that league was last year, it's just as talented, if not more so. Archbishop Wood is just a year older and a very young team that has so many playmakers. Jalen Stinson, Rasul Diggins, among many, many others. This is a, a very solid Vikings team. Newman just reloaded again. Roman Catholic still has one of the best prospects in the country at any age range. Jalen Duran, Justice Williams. That's a tremendous team coached by Matt Griffin. Archbishop what, Carroll uh, has, uh, has Anquan Hill I'm, playing I'm some sold. really good basketball. Their front court goes six eight six eight six seven. Yeah. So uh, and, uh, and then of course and then of course the team that was the you know the semifinalist of the state tournament last year, certainly with some different pieces, different parts. But this is a league that is so deep, and there are other teams that I didn't mention there. Archbishop Ryan's going to be very tough this year. Father Judge has gotten better, and I know there's a, a team or two I missed uh, there that it should be blatantly obvious, but there's just so many good teams in this league. You know, Cardinal O'Hara, LaSalle, they both have their work cut out for them uh, after this game ends here tonight. Every game is a grind in this league, and that's cliche to say, but as much as any league in the state, let alone the country, I, I think it's applicable here. Oh, I love it. I mean, uh, you know, as an Indiana guy, I grew up in Indiana, um, you know, you can just see the basketball intensity yep. just ratcheted so way up, you know, in this game. Uh, even though, uh, you know, O'Hara is, uh, you know, got a pretty good lead. Um, and they've had, you know, LaSalle's number, as you said, you know, in recent years, despite all the LaSalle success, you know. They played them tight. They played them tight yep. and tough. So, you know, uh, Bob, uh, you know, I might be elbowing you, uh, you know, a lot to, you know, get a, get to many of these games as I can <laughs> this year because this is a lot of fun, and uh, I'm really looking forward to the second half. I'm looking forward to it as well. We tick down towards it here at LaSalle College High School in Winmore, Pennsylvania. He's Bruce Badgley. I'm Bob Long. We're calling the game for you here tonight. Excited to do so. The first of many here on Bob Long Sports. We'll be covering LaSalle Explorers basketball all season long. Now we're going to take you down to the courts. About time for the beginning of the second half here on Bob Long Sports. Evan Icefeld doing a great job on camera for us here tonight. We appreciate his help and the help of the students here at LaSalle all year long for helping us out on camera. Yeah, on my broadcasts, uh, you know, we utilize, uh, you know, the students and interns from ever any university. I mean, it's an mm -hmm. important aspect of, uh, you know, not only uh, being able to bring you more games that way, but it's a great learning experience for the students. No doubt about it. A great manager core here at LaSalle. And great to have Evan on board here tonight part of the Bob Wong Sports family. You as well, Bruce. Good to have you, my friend. Oh, man. I tell you what. Great way to spend a Tuesday. There's an offensive rebound by Bambara. What a pass oh. in there. That was dangerous, and a foul is going to be called against Holland. I'll say that was an incredible pass and probably an ill-advised one all at the same time. I'll tell you what. Um, you know, Holland didn't back down. LaSalle's still playing very physical on the inside. They're, they're uh, not letting them have anything. 
It's a 19 point lead for Cardinal O'Hara. Here's Adrian Irving Jr. Sam Brown guards Dinkins. Purnell spins into the lane, lost the handle and traveled. You know, it's going to be interesting to see uh, how Coach McKee can maybe get some offensive sets the second half to get some uh, open jump shots for Jake Timby. I mean, they're going to have to start, you know, launching some threes. So that's one of the things that I'm going to be looking early on is whether or not they can open up some good stuff for Jake Timby. Here's Sam Brown, dives to the cup. Great look to the weak side, and DePietro couldn't handle it. Not a very good pass the other way from O'Hara. Lack of discipline there. Brown, good finish. Good find on the transition there from the Explorers, and it's 35-18. Purnell goes high off the window. He's nudged down low by Jake Timby in the act of shooting. Two coming at the line. Yeah, very up-tempo to start this half uh, by both squads, which is a little surprising, but uh, going to be interesting to see how... Uh, LaSalle can, you know, open up a little bit more from the three-point line. I think that, you know, down as much as they are, um, you know, they're going to have to start launching some threes to get back in this game. And for Cardinal O'Hara, I mean, there's no reason to, in effect, throw into triple coverage there. <laughs> exactly. That's why when I talked about, like, surprisingly up-tempo, right. I mean, it's literally a game of keep away at this particular point. It's a 19 point lead for Cardinal O'Hara, 37-18. Brown at the top of the key. That looks gonna come all the way through to O'Donnell. Yeah, I mean, somehow they gotta get some back screens to Timby to get, because uh, uh, Adrian Irving is just blanketing him right now. And another giveaway there from O'Hara. O'Donnell thought about the three. That one's given away. And fortunate for LaSalle that it's knocked out of bounds by O'Hara. It was nearly a turnover. Yeah, with the lack of possessions that LaSalle's going to have in this game, they're, they're just going to have to shoot more threes. More than anything, getting high percentage looks every time down the floor. Brown, here's O'Donnell. Timby got his defender in the air. And they'll reset it. Spinelli falls away. Tough shot. It'll go down with three hops on the rim. Good Full look there. Pressure. Unselfish by Timby. Bambara thought that was a carry. Good finish in the lane once he got there with the Euro step. <laughs> when, the, when he elevates, there isn't anybody on the court that's going to stop him. Holland, he lost the ball, gets it back. Never really had possession, so no travel. And a wild pass right on the money. Up and under, won't go. And a foul is called nope. against Reeves. Wow. I mean, Sam Brown just, like, ripped that ball. Whoa, whoa. It's actually going to go against Brown. Oh, my. One more look if we can get the tail end of it here. And now we just missed it, but... Brown is called for the foul. Boy, he he went up there. He skied and he just ripped the ball out of the O'Hara's players' hands. Sloppy play there from both sides. And now he tried to dribble it through the legs <laughs> and poking it from behind, whether that was intentional or not. <laughs> oh, Adrian that, Irving. Oh, that's what I was going to ask. Was that intentional? <laughs> <laughs> we'll get one more look. Let's see this. I, I really want to see if this is intentional. I don't know. I can't tell. <laughs> we'll let the user be the judge. Look, I mean, I know you got a big lead, but I can't believe the coach is just going to sit by and let guys dribble through the other, you know, legs like that. Oh, man, he just What scared. a rebound there by Bambara. Well, I would say, Bruce, that's the exact reason why you don't go crazy up-tempo dribbling through guys' legs. I mean, this there's no shot clock. You're up 19 points. This is a LaSalle team that came back from 19 down late in the third quarter against... Archbishop Carroll last year. Yeah, and and it, I mean, in the same vein you talked about, I mean, O'Hara's got to have high percentage shots too. Here's Ireland. 
He lost his footing, and here comes Bambara oh, the other way. What a move. Oh, look a out. Euro step, and he's fouled hard by Brown. This is an unbelievable play, and at the end, I think Sam Brown is just saying, hey, you, you're torching a couple of our guys. You are not laying this in. Well, look, look at the behind the back there, and he's just he's eyeing that jam, and then uh, just comes in. I don't, boy, it's hard to think that's not a travel. I mean, I, I – are you team a, Euro I'm, step or I'm team old, travel? I'm old school, man. You're team old I'm, school. I'm team old school. That's a travel <laughs> in my book, but <laughs> he missed the foul shot. Listen, travel or not, it was that's pretty. one of the more skilled plays you'll see a big man make. Uh, clearly, I mean, Bambara six six uh, with some length, and uh, that was that was just you know that'll be the play. You know, let's just say if I was doing this game that I normally do on Twitter. That would have been one of the highlights that I would want to put out there. <laughs> Terrific play there by Bambara. One of two from the line. Cardinal O'Hara, 40. LaSalle, 20. Well, now every possession so valuable for LaSalle. Good cut there. Nice. Big time slam by Spinelli. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, get a little momentum going. Get the juices flowing again on offense. And now Jax fires it back up top. Tough move inside. Won't go. Big time rebound. Hard to and out of bounds. Yeah. Jax Tricky falls out of bounds, and it'll go LaSalle's way. Hard to believe that wasn't a travel either, but... Uh, one more yeah. look at this one. Brings I, it I down. Just, does put it on the turf, and there he goes, yeah, out of bounds. rolling around there. I mean, you know, in the same vein. I mean, you know, Dave O'Hara's got to value the basketball just as much as LaSalle does, maybe more so. Another quick two there. Holland cuts it to 16, 351 to play. Reeves drives. Dinkins spins inside. Pretty good defense here by LaSalle. A hoist from Burton. No good. Or I should say Purnell. He had a good look. So here we go. LaSalle's gotten a few possessions where they've gotten easy looks inside. Looking for help. Here's a cutter. Spinelli has it at the elbow. Rises and brought down by Tricky. But that's a pretty good look, Bruce. It was a good look. I mean, look, you, you don't have all day to find that high percentage shot. And this is, this, is, this is where, see, this is what O'Hara's got to do. They've got to become more deliberate here. And really settle for nothing more than layups. That's a pretty good shot there, and hits. Trey uh, Dinkins for three, a guy who last year, Bruce, Halfway through the season, had his season cut short with an ankle injury. He's been good tonight. Boy, all those guards. The guard play for O'Hara has just been outstanding all night long on the offensive and defensive end. Holland directing traffic. Here's Spinelli. He's been good the last few minutes. Sets the screen, and good. Holland hits. Nice. How good is that? Nice. Per beautiful play there. Give and go. Two-man basketball in every sense of the word. Now Purnell, an open three. Gets wow. the roll. And a 20-point lead. Verano for three. Got Sweet it. stroke from the sophomore. Just what the doctor ordered. Good timeout. Um, but I got to believe that, uh, you know, O'Hara here has got to uh, – you know, take a little air out of the ball. I know we've we've only got, you know, we're still in the third quarter. But, you know, being up 17 points, um, you know, taking the high percentage shot and taking the air out of the basketball, I mean, that's the M.O. Look, I'm not obviously the coach out there, but and, and I am old school, but that's what you do. I mean, you take the air out of the ball, work the, for the high percentage shot, make the other team work on defense. That's why you take the air out of the ball, because it affects their offensive play. You may say you're not the coach, but you do say you're, you're from Indiana. You talk about high school basketball out there, a little Hoosier style, take the air out of the ball. Soon enough, they'll be running the picket fence, oh. Mr. Hackman. <laughs> 
Well, what can I say? It is it is my all time favorite movie, and a lot of people's all time favorite movie. We're talking about yeah, lump Hoosiers, me into of that. course. Yeah, right. <laughs> lump me into that crew. Tremendous movie. We're under two minutes to play. The offense has opened up on both sides in the last few minutes. Now Purnell, good look to the outside. A corner three, no good. It's a big rebound there by Timby. And now a couple of Lions behind the play. Holland lost oh. the ball, last touch by Tricky. Yeah, still good defensive play there by uh, Tricky. But, you know, there again, um, you know, settling for a three ball, uh, even, though it was, even though it was open, it's still a low percentage shot at this point of the game when there's reason no, there really is no reason to even to release the basketball. Um, drive to the basket, get foul. Don't take the three. Holland does get to the basket. What a finish over the top of the six foot eight. Jack's tricky. And full court here from LaSalle, trying to speed up Cardinal O'Hara. Irving, a nice job. Make that Burton. Now he'll find Dinkins. He's been hot and stays hot. Three pointer for Dinkins. Timeout on the floor. 109 to play. And that's a big time answer from Cardinal O'Hara. It was a big time answer. And, uh, you know, they keep. They keep firing the three. They keep making the threes. Uh, um, and, uh, you know, quite honestly, I was, I was kind of surprised that the timeout was called by O'Hara um, at that particular juncture. Going to be interesting to see what, you know, Coach Nemitz has to say for the team here. But, uh, boy, an awful big quarter for them. Um, they've held back all challenges from LaSalle thus far. And LaSalle, quite honestly, they've played a pretty good quarter they of basketball. Have. Um you know, they haven't made many mistakes. They've shot the ball well. They played good defense. And what is it, what have they got to show for it? <laughs> An 18-point deficit. Right. I mean, <laughs> they've doubled their point output from the first half. 16 in the first half, 15 points scored here with still time to play in the third quarter. Yeah. The offense has been efficient. You know, you'll, you'll take four 15-point quarters in most efforts this year, given the defense that Mike McKee preaches and, and instills into these guys. It's just been quite the offensive day for Cardinal O'Hara. Wow. I mean, uh, you know, I don't I don't know if we've got shooting percentages, but boy, uh, quite honestly, uh, they have just shot the lights out from three-point land all night long. And, uh, you know, that obviously affects the interior defense there, too, of why they've had, you know, good lanes to drive to the basket. Obviously, this is game one of the season and a long way to go. I mean, we're still more than a minute to go in the third quarter. But if I had to diagnose... This Cardinal O'Hara team, to me, they look like a team with talented guards that can compete with just about everyone. I think it's going to be a discipline issue over the course of the year. Do they stay away from the turnover? Do they take good shots? Do they stay away from those full court passes unless there's really somebody open? Sam Brown to the hoop. Count it and one. He's got one more coming at the line. Uh, but for O'Hara, that, that's my thought, is that there's talent here, and I've seen instances where they're pushing the envelope a little bit too far. Could that come back to haunt them in the, third, in the fourth quarter here? But more on a longer view, what does their season look like here in the Catholic League against some talented teams? Yeah, uh, no, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, we're just looking at a, at a tiny snapshot of this season, uh, you know, this one game, but... Um, there's, there's a lot you can build on uh, with this Cardinal O'Hara team. And uh, they're going to gain a lot of experience as well. You know, they still are relatively young. I mean, um, you know, Irving's a junior. Bambara's a junior. Uh, Purnell's a junior. Yep. I mean, <laughs> you know, that's been their offense, and they're all three juniors. So this is just no one-trick pony either. And now they'll hold it up. 37 seconds left. In the third quarter, LaSalle with defense out to the logo. It's Verano guarding Purnell. Inside is tricky, can't finish. They'll get another look. 20 seconds left, don't need to rush, but they get the open look. Verano hits it, and just like that, it is 30, 49 37. They wave it off, four seconds left. That'll force Cardinal O'Hara to take it out of the baseline. Now, I hesitate there because Sam Brown hits that free throw the last time down the floor. 
So that's a three-point play. Unless that was a two from Verano. Uh, I think they got the score wrong I was going to say, how did the game get so close so fast? Right. And so, and I'm sorry, I'm looking up on the scoreboard, the digital scoreboard here, and I'm seeing 49-36, 4.2 left. I'm going to check that out. We'll go to a, a commercial break, and we'll check that out as to how they got it to 36 versus 37. Three seconds left. Great defense. At the oh, horn it goes. Oh, incredible. Anthony Purnell with the three. Wow. Just what the doctor ordered. And this was a contested shot. It's I mean, tremendous defense. What are you going to do? Tip your cap at that point. Absolutely tremendous. all you can do. Great uh, ending there. But, you know, see, like I said, I mean, uh, what I was talking about was – shortening the game by you know having a, a, a little bit more ball control on the offensive end you're shortening the game and uh you know by not shortening the game that's how LaSalle literally within just a matter of seconds um you know it, it took a, a, a an awfully good three there at the end of LaSalle to or excuse me by um, O'Hara to pull back out to that you know, 16-point advantage, but just that quick. I mean, it's um... – Oh, there he is. Oh, you got something on the screen? <laughs> <laughs> I think we had something on the screen there. There you but, go. No, but that was the thing is, like, all of a sudden, it got down to a 13-point advantage. It's what I talked about through that whole third quarter of why you want to burn some clock. Because as long as there's time on that clock, well, LaSalle has an opportunity. So the more time that you take – in those possessions, the less opportunity or the less possessions that LaSalle has to come back. So um, it's going to be very interesting to see now. Uh, you know, quickly it got back to a 16-point you know, advantage. But, uh, you know, we'll see how uh, Coach Demitz plays it here, you know, in the fourth quarter where it takes the mayor out of the ball, whether he drives to the basket and tries to shoot free throws. Um, I'm old school. That's what I'd be doing. Ready to start the fourth quarter here. Bob Long, Bruce Badgley. We did get a, an answer while Bruce was chatting there. Uh, what it actually had happened was a lane violation on that Sam Brown free throw, okay. which I did not catch in real time. So it is 52-36, Cardinal O'Hara. Got that answer from the folks at the scorer's table, and we are underway here in the fourth quarter. Skip pass for Timby, out of bounds, through the hands in Cardinal O'Hara basketball. Yeah, really, Timby hasn't been a factor tonight from out, and that's a credit to that O'Hara defense. When they've been man-to-man, -man, it's been mostly Anthony Purnell at six foot on Timby. And it's certainly not a box and one by any stretch, but when they're man-to-man, -man, he's just not going to let Timby beat him. And then we have seen zone looks from Cardinal O'Hara as well. There it is. See what a move! That's gonna drop. Oh, it's a but he traveled. Block. He traveled. They called him for the travel. That's correct. Nonetheless, <laughs> oh my goodness! He just went through a bunch of trees to that's get to that basket. That's an unbelievably athletic play. But that—to that, be honest, I don't see a travel there. Uh, I mean, it isn't any different than you know when Bombara went to the basket. It's a jump stop, and then another jump. I, a Sports Center highlight type play called off with the travel. And now LaSalle, can they take advantage? Brown lines up the three, in and out. Huge rebound there, and Timby went right back up with it. He'll shoot two at the line. So when it's not going from distance, Bruce, let your senior, your stud, go get it inside. Yeah, that, that's, you know, seniors are the ones that are going to set the chemistry for this team this season, you know, following um, obviously the departure of all the seniors last year. But, you know, that's where uh, Timby is going to be very, very important to the success of this team this season. In and out on the second, one for two for Jake Timby. Cardinal O'Hara unbeaten so far this year. 15-point lead, Bambara to the hole, and he will shoot two at the line. 
There it is. I mean, just like I was saying, you, you know, just drive to the basket and shoot free throws. And here's another look. Beat his first man. and yeah, He just had his mind set up. When he got that ball, he was going to the basket. And I can tell you that's probably what the coach told him in the huddle at the timeout is you guys need to start moving the ball to the basket and draw some fouls. And honestly, we saw Bambara with the Euro step. You said walk earlier in the game. Again, the agility that time because Holland did a nice job to set up shop. I think far enough out mm -hmm. that if he caught him straight on, it would have been a charge, but able to, in the midst of that drive, adjust and just feel his way to the left so that he's catching Holland on the left side and not drawing the personal foul on the offensive side. Absolutely, Bob. I mean, uh, I tell you what, it's great to be alongside you, man, because, uh, you know, your analysis of this game and, uh, you know, how you announce the game, it just fantastic to be alongside. Well, I appreciate that. What a pass. One more. Too good. In transition, Cardinal O'Hara has it going on here tonight. Well, they're, they're either settling for the high percentage shot or they're drawing the foul, and that's what you got to do to close these games out. Count it and one. Sam Brown to the hoop. The sophomore sensation slices through. Well, I'll tell you what. I mean, that was a, a big-time move. Uh, same thing. I mean, he saw the basket in his eyes and nothing else and went right to the basket. He didn't care who was in front of him. Big free throws here. Well, Sal trading twos. Certainly they need to continue converting on this end, and they need to get stops on the other. It's a 16-point lead for Cardinal O'Hara. Full court look for LaSalle. Dangerous pass. Bambara has it taken away. What a job by number 10. That's Kevin Reeves throwing that off of number 33. Mike DiPietro, where it looked like LaSalle was going to get the ball back. Here's the tail end of that play as Reeves comes up to get it, tosses it right off the thigh. Well, that's the athleticism that uh, O'Hara has exhibited all night long that really LaSalle's had no match for. LaSalle gets the switch inside. They had Verano on Bambara, and they're doing everything they can to, go to, get, to get him out of there. Yeah. There's a foul. Dinkins to the line. DePietro picks up the foul on the swipe. Yep. Yeah, uh, just what I've been kind of talking about at nauseum here, but they're just gonna they're just gonna hold on to the ball, drive to the basket, get fouled, and uh, shoot free throws. Impressed by the pure scoring ability of Trey Dinkins, both off the dribble, rising from deep. Who haven't you been impressed with the scoring ability on this O'Hara team? I, I hear mean. All of them, uh, very, very impressive. Not only handling the basketball, shooting the basketball, and their defensive play. All of them, very well-rounded players. I think it's a team that if folks didn't take seriously before the year, they will after watching this broadcast here tonight. Verano, he's been good. And oh, hits it again. Wow. Three for three from deep. Super soft. There he is. 58-43, Cardinal O'Hara with the lead, and LaSalle, give them a lot of credit. They are fighting here tonight. They had every reason after being down 19 at half to kind of pack it in, and it has been the offense coming back for this Explorers team. Cutting it a little bit closer, but O'Hara has had answers. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, LaSalle, hey, look, they, uh, you know, they closed the gap to within... 12 points and uh, really had an opportunity to get it get it down to 10 and uh, in the third quarter there now Harris said no way Jose and uh, just kind of you know knocked down a couple of threes and uh, a turnover and boy uh, you know they pulled out to that advantage and they've not looked back Sam Brown picks up his fourth personal foul eighth against this LaSalle team front end and Dinkins gets the roll. You know, I love this broadcast position. I mean, we can, a, a great table here. I mean, very comfortable. We actually have something to lean up against. <laughs> man. We do it right here at LaSalle. What I'll can I tell say, you, Bruce? Man, that's fantastic. Uh, really having a great time, Bob. Well, I, can't, I, I can't tell you how out. much fun I've had tonight. Just a little bit too much on that pass from Sam Brown. It's the right idea with the ball screen and slip from DePietro. 
And you see Brown coming down the floor. A really nice job by DePietro to set the pick, let Dinkins through. All of a sudden, he rolls. And again, open there. Oh. That's the right idea. Yeah, a game uh, it is filled with those kind of plays that uh, can really turn uh, you know, a game one way or another. Burton, as we tick under five minutes, he'll take his time up near the logo. Gets by the defender. They're going to force LaSalle to either double team or foul. You know, this is great, great practice for the team under game conditions to close it out. I mean, it's one thing to practice, but this kind of game at this time of the season, I think is going to be very, very a good experience for O'Hara as the season progresses. And you got four guys on the floor that can do this, and three of them have shown it off thus far. Their ability to waste precious time, Bambara, Goes down, ball is loose, able to get that pass off. A alternate possession situation on the held ball. Will retain the basketball with Cardinal O'Hara. Frankly, uh, Bam Barr did a pretty good job to not travel. <laughs> he, he, he did, and he, he actually almost got the, the ball away on a pass, but uh, credit LaSalle's defense there for the tie-up. Five seconds. Wow. So Purnell turns it over. Dinkins a bit late on that backdoor cut. He was open, but just not in in time. Four minutes, 16 seconds left. Already offense, defense here with Sam Brown coming back onto the floor, replacing Horace Simmons, the 6'5 freshman. Well, you need a quick shot, need a quick three. So they got Timby back in the game. Let's see if he can get him open. Verano thought about the three, closed on well by Reeves. Oh. Nearly a travel there. Under four minutes to play. Yeah, now, you know, you just got to get a shot up, whether it's high percentage or not, and he's That's pretty high knock percentage. it down. Big time there from Shane Holland. He's played a solid game tonight. I mean, you know, Shane's a senior. He knows what it's all about. It's a foul called against Holland. Again, you probably needed a foul at some point there. Not the worst decision to go for the steal. And if you get the foul, then you get the foul called against you. Or, but or Holland, you get the charge if he goes the wrong direction. So, uh, I mean, now it looks like it's, uh, you know, double bonus for uh, O'Hara. So uh, they'll be shooting two on every foul. Hits the first, 3.42 to play. Cardinal O'Hara, 62, LaSalle, 46. Dinkins has just played such a solid game. But I, I think we said that about every O'Hara player tonight. I mean, they've not made many mistakes at all. And look at that defensive effort there by Purnell. Purnell! Oh! <laughs> Somehow got it back, and Purnell <laughs> off the feed from Dinkins. I was ready to look at the replay of a jam there. Timby got his defender in the air, and there. a good shot there. Yeah, nice, uh, nice fake. 3-11 to play. Cardinal O'Hara 64, LaSalle 48. Keep away time. Indeed yeah, it just, is. They're just going to wait and get fouled. I'd be surprised if they release the basketball. Yeah, you don't want those cross Fortunate there, but there. it is into the backcourt. So LaSalle basketball with 2.46 to play. Yeah, one of the few turnovers that uh, O'Hara's had tonight. But still, up 16 points with 2.46 to go. Have the game well in hand. Inside they go, Brown can't finish, but he'll go to the line to shoot two. Brown hits the first. The deficit is down to 15. Yeah. 
Second one is good as well. 64 to 50, 238 to play. Across the timeline, Purnell. Here's Reeves with it, and they'll play keep away once again. Let's out with the nine team fouls. Dinkins throws it, a fastball through Reeves' hands. And all of a sudden, timeout LaSalle, 221 to play. They'll get the basketball back. Bob, you're amazing. You're actually doing play-by-play -play while you're troubleshooting the system there. What we and, do. you know, you did the right thing there by continuing to, you know, go on there. I believe we're probably still on. If nothing else, we are recording. But it's first here. It's a first. I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, we weren't. We're, we're on the local network here. Maybe I should have just stuck with the hotspot. Uh, I don't know. We're going to see if we're on. Either way, we'll take a break here at this full timeout and be right back on the other side. Nearly 40 years. Right here on Frankfurt Avenue. Generation after generation. Our neighbors continue to be our customers. We have access to the cars and trucks you want with financing you need. Dumpy Ford is Northeast Philly's first choice for America's number one brand. 7700 Frankfurt Avenue in Mayfair. Online at www.dumpyford.com. Come experience the Dumpy difference. You'll be glad you did. Welcome back here, folks. 2-11 to play. It's a 64-50 game here. Verano for three. It's good. And just like that, it is down to 11. Crazy sometimes how this system works. All of a sudden, it just, like, drops out. It's... Bud O'Hara with the basketball. Wide open is Reeves. Puts it up and good. And Brown pulls it back. Good slip to the cup. Extra pass, Timby. Holland for three. Got nice. it. Sweet. You know, Shane I mean, Holland. good play there with a defender in his face. And it has been one heck of an effort here tonight for LaSalle to come back in this game. Might be too little too late, but a minute eight left, and it's 66-56. Given away, though. Here comes Holland the other way. Timby's open for three. Holland will take it himself yeah. and finish. Well, that's what those seniors have to do sometime. Timeout. Timeout called. 18 points. Uh, you know, sometimes we get caught up in it, too. There's only a minute to go. You know, we forget ourselves how much time there is left. But, you know, you got to give credit to LaSalle for, you know, fighting down the stretch there. And, um, you know, they played a, a pretty solid game. You have to, co you have to hope. The coach McKee and the rest of that team just kind of build on, you know, the, the game that they've got. Look, they played a very strong opponent. And um, it's going to be really interesting to see, um, you know, how they build on that. That's, that's what you're doing in December. You're, you're basically creating the building blocks for the rest of your season. Um, if you're a coach, you're looking at substitution patterns. You're looking at team chemistry. Um, you know, it's it's one that uh, if you're playing well, it's great. If you're not playing well, well, there's a lot of hope for the future. No doubt about it. And this, again, game one in the Catholic League here. It's been a good one. Quite the comeback here from LaSalle. It's down to eight points with about a minute to play in this one. So turnovers and forcing Cardinal O'Hara to make foul shots. That's the name of the game down the stretch. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we'll see. I mean, it's uh, it's it's going to be very interesting for me. I know, you know, down the stretch here, or, uh, as I watch the regular season, I can tell you unequivocally that I'm going to really keep my eye on Cardinal O'Hara because knowing how well they play and how, how well the teams that they play play against them, are going to be uh, like I do with football. You know, you ha at some point in time throughout a season, you kind of connect the dots to see what teams are who you think they are. And clearly, to me, in my mind, what I've seen here with my own eyes tonight is Cardinal O'Hara 
is going to be a team to be reckoned with, if not in the in the Catholic League here in Philadelphia, but in the state tournament as well. Fifth personal foul against Sam Brown. He will take a seat for the evening. 39.9 left in the basketball game. To the line for two, a Jameel Burton, the 6'1 junior. Jake Timby will be replaced, uh, or I should say Brown replaced. Timby to the other side of the floor. And no good on the foul shot, but it was two shot foul. <laughs> That's the 10th team foul. Well, they had the. Uh, Everybody was ready to get the rebound. Exactly. Everybody's still playing intense with 40 seconds to go. Even Big though, rebound there by Ireland. You know, what's surprising is, is. is Big time block kept in bounds last touch by O'Hara. 31 6 left in the game. So, you know. I think it speaks volumes that Coach Nemitz has really kept his starting squad out there for this last minute up 18 points. Well, they're up eight now, so they got me, up eight points. Excuse they got to be up there now. I mean, this is this is crunch time here. That's a tough shot. No good. Brought down by Bambara, and now he'll shoot too, and that might be the end of things here. You know, that's what I like. I said that's what I talked about. Um, <laughs> You know, start, starting the whole second half of shortening the game, shorten the amount of possessions your opponent can get, and you know, wow, look at what, look what happened so quickly. Even caught me by surprise. Well, and this is something that LaSalle can certainly learn from here. They made their hat as a second half team last year, and today, well, this performance appears no different. Some things to take away from the first half, certainly, but their fight in the second half, their offensive efficiency are what I'll take away from this one. Bambara got his own rebound and finished it. Yeah, that just the microcosm of the whole game for, uh, for O'Hara there. The athleticism that they've shown here has been the real deciding factor in them coming out on top today. The scoreboard, he, the, did he add the... No, the, not yet, but we got it on our 68-58. 12.1 left in the game. And if you didn't let him know, I think everybody on this side of the floor was going to let the scorekeeper know that it was 68, not 66. I'm telling you what. Uh, the story I could tell you in a, a District 3 game last year where they actually put points on the scoreboard during halftime um was and then here i mean it's during the game it's you know but um literally the the scorebook was wrong uh the official scorebook ended up being wrong and that's all they could go by they ended up putting two points on the scoreboard at halftime for the team that actually lost the game, but still, it was crazy. That's a pretty wild story. <laughs> it is, it's the wildest thing I've ever seen. I mean, I never saw the score change at halftime before or since. It was in a playoff game. So, um, York High and Muhlenberg. Boy, that'll be a game I'll never forget. Yeah, oh, I my. bet. I think uh, if anybody remembers from Berks County who's watching, that was the game that... Uh, Ended with a bunch of arrests in the middle of the floor afterwards. So. <laughs> and what you remembered from that game was the points, the points. being averaged, uh, being added on at half. <laughs> yeah, no, there, there, there were a few fans after the game uh, that, uh, you know, there were some skirmishes or what have you. But, yeah, the points being put on at halftime, that was a pretty wild. That was, that was a really wild game. Really wild game. Ten-point differential here. Purnell hits it, and it's an 11-point lead for Cardinal O'Hara. Final six seconds. Holland launches the three. It's wow. good. Nothing but net. You know, the, score, the, game. the score is not going to indi indicate, really, the dominance that Cardinal O'Hara had tonight. Um, you know, I got a little distracted with the, <laughs> with the system there, and I looked up, and my gosh, it was, you know, the eight-point game there. But 
Um, you know, really, Colonel O'Hare, a very solid ball club, and uh, I look for big things for them. And LaSalle, a lot that they can take. The biggest thing is, is there was no let up in this team, regardless of score, all night long. It was a great game. Impressed by LaSalle's fight down the stretch. Also impressed by everything that Cardinal O'Hara brings to the table. Ryan Nemitz has talked a lot about this team, and the talent level of this team has improved since he's come on campus. There's no doubt about that. And now they have three, four guards that can shoot the rock quite well. They can dribble to the baseline. They can finish quite well at the hoop as well. Bambara is a solid player. He'll be challenged by some of the bigs in the Philadelphia Catholic League. But again, for me, is this team, can they get a little bit more disciplined offensively? If they can, turn the ball over less, I think they can play with most teams here in the Catholic League. And for LaSalle, I want to see what we saw in the second half from them all year long. This is a team that can stretch the floor. I mean, certainly you have a guy in Jake Timby who's an unbelievable shooter. And we also saw Verano do the same thing. And if you have Verano as well as Jake Timby being able to stretch the floor, Mike DiPietro, a good presence inside, and then Sam Brown being your guy to slash to the hole with Holland being your point guard, that's a pretty good Catholic League basketball team as well. And I think a lot to take away here in December from their first five games, three and two, heading into a road matchup against Archbishop Ryan on Friday, which should be a tough one against the Joe Zaglinski coach team. Yeah, you touched on it. I was impressed with uh, Nick Verano tonight. Um, you know, DePietro inside, I think he can match up with, with just about anybody. He can bang, uh, looked athletic in there. Um, you know, he got into a little foul trouble there, but uh, he hung tough with Bambora. Um, I think, you know, a key to getting some better looks for Jake Timby um, to where he can get on track, but I think that's a credit to the O'Hara defense all night long. It was almost like a box and one on Timby when he was out there. Right. So, um, you know, a good effort by uh, LaSalle, and, but totally impressive by O'Hara tonight, and uh, both of these teams are going to be an awful lot of fun to watch. Um, it's going to be tough for LaSalle because, you know, yeah, really, for both teams, I mean, it is just it is just a minefield in the Philadelphia Catholic League of a regular season schedule. So it should be a lot of fun for both of these teams all year long. A lot of fun for me having you on here today. You do great work in uh, in Berks County and for District 3 and all the things that you do out there. So if you could, let our folks know where they're going to see you this year and where to look out for Bruce Badgley. Well, we're going to be on a Small Player Big Play, um, our phone app, uh, safe social media for youth sports. We'll be streaming all of our games. We'll be doing Berks League games. We'll be doing Lancaster Lebanon League games. Um, I cover games for LLHoops.com, so you'll be able to uh, see it all on YouTube, all in Small Player Big Play. And, uh, you know, just follow me, at Badgley Bruce. You'll get all the details of where our games are, what time, but uh, we're going to have a good lineup. Not only, uh, you know, boys games, but we're going to do a fair share of girls games as well. Uh, kind of fell in love with the girls game, being able to uh, call all six state championship games last year. So we're going to have a fair bit of uh, uh, girls games this year as well. Give the ladies some due, uh, you know, give them some live streaming there too. So, you know, I'm going to do my best bet or best part here to try and get Bob up to do a game with me, you know, to show them some Berks County basketball to see what that's like in our arenas and what have you. Uh, you, the Mr. Rockstar here at LaSalle, <laughs> waving to your peeps out there. Got to do it. But, Absolutely. Uh, you know, I want to thank Bob so much for, for having me here. It was a blast tonight. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be following him all year long. Bruce, thank you for the time. Great analysis. Great time had. Enjoyed it. He's Bruce. I'm Bob. Evan did a great job on camera here tonight. Cardinal O'Hara came out with the win, 70-62. A late charge by LaSalle made it close, but nonetheless, the Lions remain undefeated and cruise into Philadelphia Catholic League play feeling good. LaSalle licked the wounds, comes back for Friday night's tilt against Archbishop Ryan. We'll be there for it. 7 o'clock tip will be on just a few minutes before 7. Have a great night, everybody, and we'll see you soon.